Now let's talk about lubrication regime and the concept of uh, friction. Um, I'm showing over here is a well-known Strabag curve. Basically, it shows friction coefficient against the Hersey number. I'll come to the Hersey number. Basically, this, uh, this schematic of the friction variation you see here at the beginning is almost flat, and then reduction, and then little increase. And this whole thing, actually, the concept was due to Professor uh, Streibach. And he did a lot of uh, general bearing experiments against uh, a wide range of operating conditions, such as load and speed, uh, things like that. And then later on, Professor uh, Hersey in the US, and he found out we can plot this friction curve against the Hersey number so that this whole thing become a conceptual and uh, non-dimensional. It really demonstrated the variation of uh, uh, friction for general variance. So the original study was for general variance, but later on, uh, up to you know, recently, and people expanded the concept and applied this concept into different uh, uh, applications uh, of lubrication and for different components rather than just uh, uh, general appearance. Now let, let me come to this Hersey number. Okay, so this Hersey number is a non-dimensional number. Basically, it's a combination of uh, fluid viscosity and uh, velocity of uh, the relative motion. And here, the velocity is given in revolutions per second. And P is the average pressure, which means that along this axis, you either increase the velocity or reduce the average pressure. Pressure means load. Okay, so this curve looks like we can divide this curve into different regimes. Actually, that's what the concept is. Okay, uh, first one, which is here, when the uh, friction coefficient is almost constant. Looks like in this segment, the friction coefficient is independent of the, the conditions. Okay, and no matter lubrication or not. So we call this, uh, oh, the other one, this is the second regime. So one, two, and three. Let me go one by one. The first one here, we call the boundary lubrication. Okay, before I talk about the details, let me uh, explain to you this uh, cartoon. Okay, this cartoon means that I have two surfaces. They are, you see here, they are in very deep contact. There's only very thin, very uh, an interrupted, not continuous fluid film in between the two surfaces. That means the major load in this regime is supported by the surface, okay, by two surfaces. And actually, exactly what I should talk about is supported by, the load is supported by asperities. What is asperity? So asperity means these little tips, you know, those, those tips of uh, those uh, um, summits of this uh, uh, surface, uh, asper surface roughness. Okay, so roughness, you have peaks. We call those peaks asperities. So here, you see those asperities are in direct contact and then you see some lubricant in between, which means the lubricant film is not continuous. So we have substantial asperity contact over here. The second regime, you see friction, uh, you see friction reduction goes like this. And this regime we call mixed lubrication. That means from here to here, let's, uh, let's allow the speed to increase. When speed increases, and then the two surface, because we have s enough for, uh, the, hydrodynamic action, and then the surfaces begin to uh, lift, okay, to have the gap in between, but still not completely separated. You still see sometimes uh, somewhere we have asperity contact. So that's why we call in this regime the mixed lubrication. Now, if we fully increase the speed, then the two surfaces will be completely separated, and we call this regime hydrodynamic lubrication. This whole thing just like an airplane taking off. When we give enough speed, the airplane would go. Okay, so here the two surfaces are completely set up, uh, separated and due to enough uh, or sufficient hydrodynamic action. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, three regimes. Let me repeat one more time. Uh, boundary lubrication where we have uh, a significant asperity contact, so surface asperity contact. Lubric, lubric, uh, lubricant film is not continuous. 
basically is, uh, the load supporting mechanism is mainly asperities. Okay, and here, the second one basically is for the mixed lubrication, where we do have a, a, a significant lubrication or significant uh, uh, film, uh, lubricant film, but we still have asperity contact. And in the third regime, we do not have asperity contact. The fluid film is sufficient to separate those two surfaces. So now we found we have a minimum friction Right, right over here. So where is this minimum, uh, minimum friction? Okay, uh, this place. Okay, we, we can roughly see it's around, around here, which is between the border of mixed lubrication and the hydrodynamic lubrication. And at this mixed lubrication, at, at, at this minimum uh, friction location, we should see that it occurs at uh, the place we do not have asperity contact, so at the disappearance of asperity contact. And at here, what about the fluid film? What is the thickness of the fluid film? It is about three times the roughness, basically it's the combination of the two surfaces we call combined or composite roughness of the two surfaces. We use RQ. RQ is the root mean square roughness, which we're going to talk about in class. Thank you.